My name is Iris San Giovanni. I've lived all of my 19 years in South Portland, and I am now um, a freshman studying political science uh, at the University of Southern Maine, and I am a member of the Student Coalition of Maine Students for Climate Justice. I'm here today to talk about my involvement in both uh, the UMaine Systems uh, Divestment Campaign and South Portland's campaign against tar sands oil. And from these experiences, I've observed the true financial power that the oil industry has in our education, our politics, and our future. Um, I've always seen the role of an institution of higher education to foster the future leaders of our communities. But that said, how can a university invest in an industry that is directly linked to the destruction of our future? How can we be leaders in our communities when these communities are below sea level? When I pay my tuition at USM, I am investing in my future. I cannot allow the U Maine system to continue to invest in our, our endowment in industries that will make our collective future unlivable. Yes. In fact, divesting the U Maine system endowment would be consistent with our institution's mission statement, which declares the University of Maine supports sustainable development, environmental stewardship, and community involvement. We are simply demanding that this promise be followed through. Divestment is a great tactic for pushing the fossil fuel industry to change. And uh, let us follow in the footsteps of Unity College and the College of the Atlantic, both who have already divested, right. and, and on top of that, have only reaped in the benefits of higher enrollment and free publicity. Let us join forces to make Maine a leader in climate justice. Um, Maine has also been a, in, put into the situation to be a leader in the movement against tar sands oil. In my hometown of South Portland, a project was proposed to export tar sands oil from Alberta, Canada through existing Portland-Montreal pipeline, which would involve a flow reversal of a 65-year-old pipe carrying an oil far more corrosive than crude. So the question would not be, will the pipe ever burst, but when? A citizen's initiative fought back on this proposal from ExxonMobil and the Portland pipeline with a waterfront protection ordinance which eventually led to a citywide election. I think we all know that money is involved in politics, especially during elections, and through the campaign, it became crystal clear. A friend of mine from high school suggested I join him canvassing because I could receive $15 an hour. And then he, they told me it was uh, against the Waterfront Protection Act. Um, it was the money of the oil industry versus that of the people. The oil industry had resources like paid canvassers that our campaign just didn't have. We relied on volunteers. Canvassing on the weekends, I would come to a door and it would be littered with propaganda against the Waterfront Protection Ordinance. And by election day, our citizens campaign had only used roughly $7,000 versus the oil industry, which used more than $600,000, more than a 10 to 1 ratio. And it resulted in their victory, a 51% vote against a 49% vote. Um, now, this story could easily end in defeat, but we rose from the ashes and fought back. And now I can say that there is a 180-day moratorium that was passed, a 6 to 1 vote by our city council just this December. And this moratorium halts any action um, towards the Tar Sands project so that we can really evaluate the consequences and write a new ordinance that would protect us. Ah. <laughs> and we are on our way, but from what I've learned through all this is we're not alone. South Portland became a tar sands frontline community, but so did all of the towns along the pipeline in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, stretching all the way up to Alberta. And furthermore, the communities along the Key XL pipeline. For us in South Portland, we fought tar sands to prevent the destruction it could bring to our future community. But let us be reminded of the destruction tar sands has already brought. Let us stand in solidarity with the First Nation in Alberta whose lands were unlawfully taken and used to extract tar sands oil, and their land will never be the same. The fossil fuel industry 
goes against all the values we have as Mainers, and that is why we need to divest. Thank you. I'm an activist because the places I love and the places where I come from are at danger. I started Divest UMaine as a USM student about a year ago. And if there's any University of Maine alumni or students in here and you want to get involved, you can go to divestmaine.wordpress.com. And if you are a graduate or a student right now, you can also go to gofossilfree.org to get more involved with what we're doing. But divestment is an interesting tactic because divestment isn't going to affect the employees who currently rely on the oil industry here in Maine. It's a method for us to say, we understand that oil is a part of our economy, and we understand that people still use oil, and people still rely on oil, and it's an industry. But it's also saying that a new future is possible. And until we continue, until we stop subsidizing these fossil fuel investments, and as long as this political privilege is given to an industry, we're never going to get anywhere. So that's what divestment's for. Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, my name's Kelsey Ouellette. I'm from Winthrop, Maine, but I go to school. I'm a senior at the University of New England in Biddeford. I'm an environmental studies major, so that's what kind of brings me here to talk with everybody. Um, Currently, I'm part of our divestment com committee at UNE, as Iris was talking about. Woo! And yeah, woo, we're known as Fossil Free UNE. If you can see my t-shirt, this is one we've designed. Um, Fossil Free UNE internship, we have five primary coordinator positions. We have a research coordinator, student outreach, action and events, coalition and education and policy. And personally, I'm the education and policy coordinator. So my job will be to organize events on campus, campus that will educate our university community as, long as, as well as the Bitterford and Southern Maine community on divestment and why we should divest. But we are also part of the Maine Students for Climate Justice, which is a coalition of seven Maine schools, including USM, uh, Bowdoin, UNE, College of the Atlantic. Um, so we're all very excited to come together and work together on these main issues. And ultimately, yeah, ultimately, Fossil Free UNE intends to create a divestment proposal and present it to our board of trustees, our president, and our undergraduate student government. And we hope to do that by May, so we hope for divestment by May, so yeah. I'm Representative Brian Jones from Freedom. I'm the sponsor of LD 1461, uh, an act to divest the state pension funds of fossil fuel investments. We all know climate change is real and that the primary cause is the burning of fossil fuels. It's not acceptable to continue our investments in companies that reap profits at the expense of the environment. Now the transition to a sustainable renewable energy economy that addresses these environmental issues and cli climate change, that slows the depletion of our natural resources and builds an economic infrastructure not controlled by the financial elites, that's what we need and we need it now. Fossil fuel companies have spent $347 million in campaign contributions and lobbying efforts in this congressional session alone. Guess what? They got their money's worth. They've received over $20 billion in subsidies. Now, these subsidies amount to direct handouts to corporate polluters. This, just to be perfectly clear, the fossil fuel industry currently controls fuel assets, reserves that if burned will produce more than five times the amount of greenhouse gas emissions required to raise global temperatures above two degrees Celsius. Now that's the level that 167 countries, included the United States, have agreed represents the threshold beyond which civilization cannot survive without enormous human suffering. Sooner or later, investors will realize that the proven reserves far exceed the amount that can be safely burned and that these stranded assets will render that portion of our retirement fund and our college investments uh, without value. 
The aspect of divestment, however, that is most powerful is not the idea of starving fossil fuel companies of funds, but the opportunities implicit in reinvestment. Let Maine once again be a leader, not by investing in the old ways that lead to destruction, but by investing in truly sustainable economic development and prosperity for our people and our environment. Thank you. Brotherhood of man, imagine all the people living